Hello and welcome to part two of the Sea Gladiator build. Now we've got the two fuselage halves together and basically what we're doing is just making sure that we've got the bits and pieces for the gun sight that are off the, the sprue. We can get them cleaned up and glued together. Then at the same time what we can do is, is get off the uh, off the sprues, um, the sort of like tail services, um, the rudder and horizontal stabilizers and so forth. Um, it's a multi-part affair. I didn't actually go and show you how to glue them all together. They're just top and bottom. Um, and the good thing about it as well, with the horizontal stabilizers, um, with the actual elevators as well, you can actually offset them very slightly just to give that sort of bit more of, a, of an animation look to, to your actual kit. Um, again, it was very, very simple. They were just sort of like plug in, angle them, and then just glue them. Now, with the um, rudder as well, what you've got is a small piece of framing to pop into the actual uh, gap to begin with, which I've already done, and which I'm just gluing into right now. Small little, bit, little tub of glue, just push it in, and it's as simple as that. And that's gonna be your main attachment point for the rudder, which is just popping onto there. Now, you can offset it slightly, um slightly being the operative word um it's not a problem but i wouldn't offset it too much um because it'll look a bit daft um but what i've done is i've offset it a few well i'll say about one or two millimeters to the left or the right i can't remember which way i've done it uh to the right in fact i'm just watching it now um and then just basically just glue it in um just using the gap in between the actual fin and the rudder. Um, there's no issues with uh, fit on this one, but if you're gonna offset it, just do it very, very slightly. Um, really along with um, the horizontal stabilizers and the elevators as well. So you can see that was a bit too much. So you can just go back, refit it, realign it. And if you so wish, you can just offset. And it really is as simple as that. There you go. Okay, then on to next was the horizontal stabilizers. And as I'm showing you there, you've got two anchor points uh, or apertures um, to fix the actual kit part on. Now for this, first of all, all I did was put a small bit of spot of um, super glue into the first aperture and onto the second one. All that is for is just for the plastic, well, for a plastic service, just to bite a little bit. So you can actually pop it in and then go over it with some glue just to make sure that it's properly secure. Now, the good thing about this is, and one thing I didn't realize that the way that the kits are actually, parts are actually made, once you popped it in, it's very difficult to actually offset it, as in having it drooped or up if you know what i mean it's sort of like well it levels us out as it on its own so i can quickly check it making sure it's all sorted which it is and then i can pop in and anchor it with a bit more glue uh, this time i'm using the plastic magic uh, from deluxe or whatever you want to call it and that will give you a nice firm attachment with the horizontal stabilizer to the actual fuselage itself. And again, the second one, when you pop it in, you're thinking, right, I've got to make sure that it's lined and straight and level with the other one, and it coincides with the, the fin and the rudder. But the good thing about it is, as soon as you pop it in, it's sort of already there. And I think that's what I was trying to actually explain to you before. Anyway, same detail, pop it in, job done. Okay, well, whilst we're happy with that, then we can have a look at just sticking the last bits and pieces of uh, the fuselage together, uh, as in the top part, I believe that's the part of the radiator or the cooling system, I think. Um, sorry. And we can actually look at um, the canopy as well, which we'll look on at a slightly later date. I believe it'll be on the next video. So again, you just put the actual parts onto the fuselage dabbing a bit of glue and it just runs down the kit part onto the actual fuselage 
and that is it. The fit is very, very good. All you've got to do is to make sure is to clean the parts up, make sure you haven't got any of the, the sprue attachments still on there, and once you popped it on, it's going nowhere. So again, just making sure I've popped enough glue on there. And if you do have any glue seepage, you can whip around with a fiberglass pen just to get rid of the glue marks on the plastic. As simple as. Cool. There you go. You want to stay up? Yeah, it will. Right. Right. What we'll do is, is we'll get the uh, the wing parts off. Those are the lower ones. Get them all cleaned up and we can move on to the upper ones, getting them sorted out. Uh, no, I'm, my mistake. Um, the elevators, well no, ailerons even. Come on, wake up, Lenny. And getting the uh, the attachments for the actual arrestor hook. Now you get two bits um, or two different parts for it. One that's plain and one that will house the actual arrest the hook so yeah cool okay i put the the basically the lower wings together and one thing you do need to make sure is is the actual flooring of it do paint it the interior green because when you put the things together as into the fuselage there is a small gap and you'll be able to see the floor okay so just make sure now what i'm explaining here now is when you actually put the um, wings together you can offset the ailerons on the actual kit itself so again you've got a bit of animation over the wings themselves now with the fit um, I would advise just a dry fit just to make sure when you put the lower wings on and really when you actually do put them on you're thinking wow that's a rather nice fit and it is the only thing to really watch out for is the actual wing roots and um, they are slightly raised and with the bottom parts as well just to make sure that when you do glue them, they're glued nice and tight, so you don't have any sort of like either, well, you won't have gaps, but raised parts of the plastic. Now, when you're doing this, um, by all means, use loads of glue, but use it sparingly, because what you don't want is to spill out all over the place and make a hell of a mess. So again, just making sure that you've got a decent fit, which it is, and once you're happy then, you can start to apply the glue. Okay then, now look onto where the arrestor hook will sit, or where it's housed. And you've got the part there that's just popping on. Now you get two um, different parts in the actual kit. Uh, you get the one that I'm showing you here. Um, and also you get one that's completely blank, as in it just... Well, I believe that'll be for the for the other version, as in the Mark One, um, or if there is one with a Mark Two, without it, I don't know. Anyway, but thank you, Molly, for your input. Um, but what you're doing is you just basically you can just pop it down, run some glue all over it, as in the actual um, the sides of it, and once you're happy with that, you can just sort of like push it down, just to make sure that it is all nice and tight and it's gonna go nowhere. Now on mine, I did have um, some slight gapping um, when I put mine together. Um, probably my own doing, um, I'm pretty sure it was. But all I did was is just uh, run some super glue over the small little gaps, spray some actuator on it, and just sand it off. And it's absolutely fine, okay? No issues at all. And we'll leave the arrestor hook off until a lot later because you know what I'm like, I'll just break it and it'll come off and I'll swear and cry. So, I'm going to leave it off. So, next bit is to stick the lower wings on. Again, like I said before, just making sure that it's all nice and flush and it fits well. And again, you can just start by running some glue just to anchor it down and then you can start putting a little bit more glue onto it just to make sure. Now, at the bottom where I'm gluing now, um, it is slightly raised. So what I did was, is well, one thing you will see, is me affixing some uh, masking tape onto it just to make sure that it actually sits down and it's flush with the rest of the fuselage. Now, I did have to go over it with a sanding stick 
just to make it all even. But again, that really wasn't that much of a, on a, well, a hardship, put it that way. So again, all I'm doing is popping some masking tape down, making sure it's nice and tight. Have a quick feel and you can see, well, you can feel under the masking tape what you've got and it's minimal. So once the bottom part is done, it's just the wing roots. And what I'm showing you here is um, with a scalpel blade that you do get some gappage between the actual wing roots. Now, it isn't uh, an issue whatsoever. All you've got to do is to make sure that you apply a little bit of pressure onto the actual wing. And if you like get any glue seepage, it's easily taken out with a sanding stick. Yay! We'll go on and glue it. Right. With that glued, what we've gone on to is the upper wing. And again, it's a two part affair, upper and lower. And you've got your ailerons there as well. Now, what I did on this one, um, to just basically to offset it and make sure they fit okay, is you can pop them in and then you can start gluing. Now, what I did was, um, is I glued all the wings together, apart from, the aperture for it. Now, I didn't glue it because the, you can just pop the actual ailerons in. Come on, Lenny, you can do it. That's it, pop them in, mate. That's it, and they're in. And all you need to do is a small dab of glue, let it run around the kit part, and that's it. Now, if you were to glue it completely together, as in the wing where the actual attachment point is, it is going to be difficult for you, if not impossible, to actually do what I've just done. So, making sure that you give yourself enough room to pop them in. So, I'm pointing at things now and showing you the actual upper wing, and that is all sorted. You do have two navigation lights to pop in. Again, I've just popped those in and glued them in and I can sort them out with a bit of paint later on. So the ailerons are in, I'm happy, and then I can take all the struts off and start cleaning them up, which I've done here. There you go. Good thing about it is uh, they are quite good. Um, you've only got a small seam line and it's easy to get rid of. And also you can get the rest of the bits and pieces off, i.e. the uh, undercarriage legs, and the other other sticky outy bits that will need to go onto the kit before you start priming. So all I'm doing is is just showing you basically just sticking the actual gear legs together. Again, it's a two part affair with where the attachment for the wheels go, or you know the wheel or the tire. So it is a question of just tapping some glue in, popping it in, and making sure you've got the right parts and the right. Um, gear leg which is quite easy to do if you get the parts mixed up pop in a generous amount of glue and you're all sorted once these are actually glued together they are very very secure and once they're actually on the kit they are very very strong so you're not going to have any issues with warpage um you know one leg being sort of like sort of like in more than the other one the attachment points are very precise and you will get a nice even undercarriage legs so again just popping the, uh, the second part together closing it all in and what i did is put a generous amount of glue all the way down so it runs down to the bottom and you can just make sure that they are squeezed together and just leave them to dry. And then all you need to do is to go around with the uh, sanding stick or your sponge, just to get the excess glue off and to make sure that you don't have any seam lines running at the front. And that's basically about it. It's as simple as that. So all I'm gonna do is carry on with the next one. And there you are, they're on. Again, I did get a slight bit of um, gapping um, but it was easily done easily filled with a bit of super glue 
And again, as you see there, I've just put on the attachments. Everything's on. Thank you, Molly. And then I'm just showing you where the gaps were. But again, they were absolutely minimal. And all very nice and happy. So, now we're going to go on to the priming. Which for this, I'm going to be using the Tamiya Dark Grey. And I'll be going for it right now. Look, hey, look, I'm airbrushing. Right, so all I'm doing is using the airbrush, um, which is the Infinity CR Plus, and I'm just liberally just popping down the actual primer that I use. I think it's XF24, it's a dark gray one. And I'll explain why I use the dark gray when we come on to the main painting stage. So again, with it being a primer coat, you do really want to make sure that you get a nice decent coat and the paint that goes down is nice and smooth. So with the other bits and pieces that you need to pop on is the actual gear door, up uh, gear doors, is the actual cockpit doors. Get it right, Lenny. So all I'm doing is uh, I'm using the interior gray green um, from Hataka. And all I'm doing is, is as you can see with the um, structure or the ribbing of the actual part, I'm spraying more into the middles of them, um, sort of like squares or rectangles. And then after that, I'll run over it with a few light coats just to actually blend everything in, if you know what I mean, but not too much. Because what I want is a different sort of like tones of green as you're looking at it. Because when you look into the cockpit, what you don't want is really just a flat piece of green with absolutely no life to it whatsoever. And after that, what you can do is once it's all dry, you can either overcoat it with a, um, a acrylic varnish. And then you can start weathering it with a few drops of whatever you're going to use. It could be enamels, it could be acrylics, it could be anything you want. But just make sure if you're doing acrylic on acrylic, that you actually cover it with some form of varnish first. So all we're gonna do now is just to run over um, the bits where it's been covered with um, the primer. And again, I'm just using the interior gray green. You don't have to be too specific with it, but obviously you don't want it splattered all over the cockpit with the detail that you've already popped in. So again, just nice and lights and coats. Just making sure that you've got everything. And again, we'll be going over it with some weathering mediums very, very shortly. So basically, I'm making sure that everything's covered. So when you actually do put um, the canopy on, that everything is covered as in you haven't got that sort of like gap between the interior gray green and your outside colors. So again, you're just making sure that's all covered. And if you're going to go inside the cockpit like I've just done, then just make sure that you're actually a bit more precise with your airbrushing. So with that, just finishing off the cockpit area, the doors, and I'm going over it with a bit of a dry brush. Again, I'm using uh, Tamiya Sky Grey. With the dry brush in, you're just basically trying to get as much off the brush and then start to apply it to the actual kit part itself. Just to give it a bit more of a worn look. You know, the arms or the shoulders of the pilot rubbing against the paintwork and just sort of like maybe wearing it away a little. And again, you can do it for the actual cockpit itself mainly where the actual um, seat harnesses will go because within time paint does wear and also you've got your ground crew um, doing maintenance on it so you're going to get sort of like dirty hands arms material rubbing against paint all that kind of business and slowly but surely it does wear it down it makes it a bit more shiny even because if you've got a matte paint and you keep going over it at some point it's going to start to shine a little bit more 
So again, just making sure I get into all the nooks and crannies. And if I've covered anything with paint, then I can quickly just go over it and just bring it back to some form of life again. That's pretty much it. Happy with that? Cool. So all we're doing now is put in some of, what do I use? Oh, the um, is it dark, no, neutral brown. Neutral brown for this, because I use the earth um, for the lower part of the fuselage, uh, cockpit even. Bloody hell, get it right, Lenny. Um, and all I was doing is exactly the same thing as I did before. Um, you're just going over it with some thinners first, just to make sure that when you actually do pop um, the wash on or whatever you're using, that it flows nice and evenly all over into the actual, um, all the nooks and crannies. So you've got a decent coverage and you're not gonna get anything that's left out, as in it's just green. Because again, over in time, I mean, these were based on uh, obviously aircraft carriers, but also they're going to be based actually on the land as well. So again, you're going to have ground crew, you know, pilots, mud, dust, grime. At some point, again, is going to accumulate in parts of the actual aircraft itself. Although these were pretty well maintained, I would imagine, at some point. But, you know, things happen and things get dirty. So again, I'm just plying small amounts, many to the, the edges and the sides. And it is just a simple dab of the actual um, enamel wash, which is MIG ammo, which I'm using. And once you're happy with that, and you've got enough on, then you can start blending it to how you want it. So again, I'm just going over the parts where I've either repainted or re-dry brushed. And again, just going over with them with the enamel neutral brown. I do find it quite satisfying when you actually get into the end of the cockpit for real, you know, for proper, and you can close everything up with either the canopy or a masking tape that you're going to be using. Right, quick swig of coffee. Mmm. That's good coffee. Right, also, um, just be aware uh, and just make sure that obviously you're putting where you want the actual um, wash or whatever you're using. So just be mindful. Again, all it is is a question of just taking your time, seeing where you want to put it. But then again, don't be afraid if you cock it up or if you think you've cocked it up, you can always go back, either clean it off um, by using a bit more of the um, thinners. You can use a paintbrush or cotton buds or whatever you've got to actually remedy whatever you've done. Not necessarily wrong, but you want to, I don't know, make it look a bit better. Something like that anyway. So anyway, enough waffling. Again, all I'm doing is doing the actual uh, cockpit doors. Again, apply some thinners, and then I'm going into using the neutral brown again. See Molly snoring again. And again, you're just adding that little bit more detail. So when you actually look into the cockpit, again, you're not gonna get that sort of like solid mass of green. And being a 132nd scale kit, even with um, the actual canopy completely closed, you are gonna see inside the cockpit quite a lot. So, once you're happy and you've got enough on, then what you can do then is to pop in with a slightly, and I mean slightly moistened brush and start going around 
and blending in the actual wash itself. Again, you don't want it too stark. You, you just want something that's just going to catch your eye. And it's going to, your brain's going to tell you that, yep, yeah, I've got a small little bit of uh, dirt in there. Where it may have accumulated over time. But again, don't be afraid to actually put more than you normally do. And just play around with it. Because like I said before, if you don't like it, then you can go back and just take it off. It's as simple as that. Even with enamels. So again, just around the sides, where the actual um, doors are going to go. What you want to try and do is just try and make it as even as possible. So when you put the side doors on, that you're not going to get a major difference between the kit part and the actual inside of the cockpit. Yes, that snoring is Molly, because I've really bored her to sleep. Yeah. So, happy with that? Yeah, I am. Then we can carry on to the next bit. So with that, I'm happy. So hope you are. And what we'll do is uh, we'll carry on on the next video. So, to laugh for now.